Oh, Zach, man, have, you know, I have been having constant headaches ever since we did those bourbon trials. Yeah, and my heartburn and digestive tract have really been bothering me. You know, me. my doctor says I need to drink more tea because it's got vitamins in Mine it. didn't say that, but my sister said it was a great idea. Well, I and guess I should confess, I don't have a doctor, <laughs> but I watched a doctor say that to someone else. Right, yep. So that's like a self-diagnosis at that point. Was the doctor in your head? His head. Your friend's head. He's operating. He's operating. <laughs> so what are we doing today? Well, I brought my very knowledgeable sister, Indy. Hello, everybody. This is Indy. She's really good at uh, everything, but also in spe- speciality things involving nature. Uh, you can follow her on Forager Friendly on Instagram uh and that's stuff like that that's a good i post. like mm-hmm. mushrooms she likes mushrooms and today <laughs> <laughs> but today we're gonna be edible mushrooms you, wait did you bring chaga no okay never mind today we're gonna be talking about non-mushrooms we're gonna be talking about tea that's for next time yep welcome to the extra <laughs> ordinary gentleman podcast thank you for tuning in and thank you for having me oh you're so welcome oh you're so, more than welcome indeed i suppose we should get right off the bat and just ask, how do we start with the, the tea experience? What do I need to brew? What is tea? A, a cup of tea. That's a very good question. Mm-hmm. Well, um, since we're recording today, you guys can see the supplies we have. But you're going to want your pot, your cups, and your method of infusion. Uh-huh. And it's always nice to have something for the aesthetics, Does a syringe too, right? work for infusion? A syringe? Yeah, you know. <laughs> something that's, <laughs> something that's going to hold your leaves so that your tea stays Oh, pure. it'll hold my leaves. <laughs> so you're speaking in sense from me, my standpoint, I'm not being an expert. You know, uh, essentially the, I forget, what did you call it? The infuse infuser? Yeah. So the infuser for me for like Limpton tea... Yep. Would be the tea bag, essentially. Right. right. Under, normally. Mm hmm. Okay. So, yeah, that's a whole other topic we could cover is the difference between, you know, a common Westerner's view of tea. Mm-hmm. And then once you enter into the world of tea and do research and find out that loose leaf tea is really what you want. Okay. So, it's kind of a, a fun thing to learn about. So, it's like the charcoal filtered, charcoal mellowed, essentially, of the tea industry. Interesting. Mm hmm. I'm already on board. Yeah, it kind of is, to be <laughs> yeah, honest. Yeah, so maybe we should explain kind of how this started because obviously this is going to be a very different episode from what you guys usually have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And So while you're explaining what you're going to explain, though, should we like start boiling water or something or is that going to be so fast that we don't need to worry about that? Our first tea we're going to try is going to be a cold brew tea. Okay. Okay. And that so we don't, is a whole So you don't flavor. use boiling water for cold tea? No. Okay. Nope. <laughs> yeah, you just let it sit in water for a couple hours. Okay. Um, so it's essentially the same um, as doing a cold brew coffee yep. method, mm-hmm. uh, like a Starbucks, or if you're doing it at home, mm-hmm. you're leaving it either out in the open or in the fridge or something for exactly. a given amount of time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So you can still you know, get the flavor, but because you're not using hot water, you're not getting any of the bitterness. I see. It's much more smooth than a hot cup of tea. Interesting. Well, what, so, what can you tell us about the um, the leaves or uh, the, the type that went into making this cold brew uh, that you have for us? So this is a sencha Japanese green tea. Okay. Um, is, a sen- is a sencha like essential or different? You know, I'm not sure what the word sencha means, but okay. it's just the category of green tea. Okay. We're going to be trying two different green teas today, a sencha and then a Gen Maicha, I think it's pronounced. Okay. That one has um roasted rice in it. So it's Ooh, a very different really? flavor profile. Ooh. Mm-hmm. So this are one's these... more fresh 
and vibrant, and then the other one is really roasty. Okay, so are are the uh, tea that you brought, are they all going to be from the same area, or are they kind of be different um, regions? Yeah, some of them are from Japan. One of them's from the Himalayas, the oh. white tea we're going to be trying. Just like that pink sea salt that we have at work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so exotic. <laughs> and I bring that up every tea. conversation mm-hmm. I can, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been to the Himalayas, but I do purchase their salt. Oh, did you and know it salt tastes can amazing. Be pink? <laughs> did you know? So, it's like black sand beaches. There's pink. You're going salt. to climb Everest. Well, can you pick up some pink salt from the Himalayas when you come back? <laughs> right. They, they probably give you like a little bit of snow and a little bit of salt when you get to the top of Mount Everest. You know. Good job. You, you didn't die. You didn't die. Here's your reward. You paid. You paid. Some, one of those. You, like, you gave one. someone like twenty thousand dollars to carry all your stuff up this mountain. Here's a little souvenir. And you just walked it up essentially yep. with that. No. Yep. And they got one of those wheel cranks with the pennies, you know, where it stamps yeah. it on there and it says you climbed Mount Everest, <laughs> but then it takes like a dollar from you, so it's like yeah, it makes yeah. you wonder like why yep. is this a thing? And they don't provide either the penny or the dollar. You well, there are the, yeah. Pennies. Yep. And then they're like, oh, man, you know, Jeff that fell off that mountain had, had my penny. pennies. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. Uh, we'll have to climb it again. Yeah. We'll get them back. <laughs> All right. <let's>, yeah. <laughs> so well, this episode kind of came to fruition, I think mostly because of a conversation you and I had, Dylan, at work. Yeah. We should say, um, you know, the three of us essentially work together, including Carter himself. Um, that So we have many conversations, you know, uh, stemming from work. So, but, uh, you know, Indy and I were essentially talking similarities, uh, between certain whiskeys, beverages, and listening to the whiskey vault, you know, when they have the quarterly challenge of their dry week, Daniel likes his tea. So, Mm -hmm. uh, I started doing a little bit of that. I am nowhere near the prowess that Indy is right now. Uh, so she's kind of going to walk us through that. And essentially it's, this is taking a break from our bourbon Yep. and we'll probably put this between the two episodes of the bourbon trials just for a, sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, and I am by no means an expert too. I'm just learning. Well, too. compared to us, you are a doctor. We are an expert. <laughs> yeah. You are an expert compared to tea, whereas we are an expert yep. compared to whiskey. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that we'll just agree to both assume that we're bad. <laughs> <laughs> I and, and just imagine how many people that are listening that have zero knowledge of tea, mm-hmm. right? All they know is Lipton and then poshy British accents. Yeah. You know, in Southern Your sweet tea. And so, oh, yeah, yeah, Southern sweet tea. Snapples. Oh, yeah. Yep. At least we have that. I love snapples. In American culture, we got sweet tea. <laughs> we got, yeah. I like iced nom- tea. Yep. I like nom- Palma. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Long Island iced tea, which doesn't have tea. Right. Well, so yeah. let's, uh, let's start us off, I think. Okay, I'm going to pour this. the cold brew, and Yay. we'll give it a try. So you said this took a couple hours, so we're going to try this. Um, what should we... I guess, do you want us to kind of have a general idea of what this is going to taste like, or do you want us to just go in completely blind and give our reactions? Yeah, I'd like to get your reaction. All right, we'll do that. Just straight up. Yeah, I, I dislike having prior information anyway. So then, that, it, then it uh, alters my view as I, I partake. Zach, have you tried any of these uh, that we're going to be... I have no idea. Really? I probably have, or or have not. I don't know. I, I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, here, she'll make like a, a nice cup of relaxing tea. I'll be like, oh, can I try that? And she'll, she'll say, sure. And then I'll have some. Like, yeah, that's nice. I just, I just won't ask. <laughs> just be like, that's good. <laughs> that's, oh, that's so polite. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. This, I think, you know, we've been talking about this for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'll wait to try this until you guys Cindy. are ready. Welcome. Ooh, that is cold. Ooh, off the nose, it's, it smells like, am I correct saying this is a green tea? I don't yep. really know the difference between black tea. Is black tea and green tea, am I correct? I won't be offended if you say i'm not uh, dead wrong but are green tea and black tea the same plant and that's just the essential roast kind of so to speak exactly okay. yes all all teas that are you know that can be classified as tea are from the same plant okay there's different variations of the tea plant so th- this smells like seaweed to me yeah 
Let's it give it like a try. Smells like uns- unsweet tea. Unsweet right, tea. Taste. Yeah, mm. it, you know, to my untrained palate for tea, mm-hmm. it tastes, you know, like an unsweetened iced tea. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I do like it. It is very refreshing. Yeah, this is very, yeah, it's super refreshing. It's easy to Especially drink, chilled, isn't it? Especially chilled, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So what's like the, yeah. what are the properties of this tea? Why would I want um, to drink this tea? It's kind of funny because green tea is like such a common drink, you know, in Asia. Mm-hmm. But... It seems like the people there don't necessarily drink it for its health benefits. They just drink it because it's as common. That's like a cultural it's, it's what everybody hobby drinks. Beverage. But What's kind of like you know, Americans are starting to realize how healthy it is, mm-hmm. and that's a big reason why I think it's becoming more popular here. Mm-hmm. To want like the really good quality loose leaf green tea. Right. At least that's for me. You know, when I hear that it's amazing, like for your skin health, it's got really high um, antioxidant levels, and you know. I'm not exactly sure all the details, but mm-hmm. that's what I do know. What's like the cost of this tea? Because like, I, I can go to mm-hmm. Tivana and get my wallet absolutely destroyed by the yeah. exorbitant prices. That's another prices. interesting thing about tea. I mean, it's ridiculous. Similarities like, between whiskey and yeah, tea. Yeah, it's like $150 <laughs> and like, oh, here's some dried leaves in a baggie. Have fun. I'm like, did you just give me drugs? You know, like I, I would, I, if they gave me weed, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I really wouldn't. Yeah, so this bag of tea. I drank <laughs> so did something with it. Well, it's probably like eight dollars for this high, pretty good quality, loose leaf. And how many servings? Japanese tea. And does it make four servings then of this? Or? Well, no, you. It was probably like I can make twenty pots of tea. Twenty pots. With eight dollars. So, yeah. Like here, that guy. That's cheaper than water. So for it's like not. the good quality <laughs> just, and the health benefits, like you know, for a a hobby drinker right it's kind of a nice thing because you can buy so many varieties of tea and mm-hmm. not spend a bunch of money mm-hmm. but you're getting a really good product yeah i like how silky it is in my mouth you know the, yeah. the coldness helps with that but like it, there's no like graininess it's just like it's relaxing in both flavor and texture but I can't really get like a good flavor profile off of it. Yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that I can't really pick up on it right. yet. You think with all the all the taste buds on our mouths, we would be able to activate or think of well, com- something, right? Combining you know our average whiskey experience yep. Yep. Um, and our s- maybe a s- somewhat above coffee, we'll have to dive into that at some point. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, you know, I I don't know. I just feel like it's something that I I'm mi- I'm definitely missing something. Yeah. On this tea, at least going on the first one. So, but mm-hmm. I am anxious to see, you know, as we go out, what what differences we'll find. So. Yeah. So this one's kind of like a round flavor, don't you think? You could describe it like it's not sharp. Yeah. It doesn't. There's not. There's mm-hmm. not really um. A, a beginning, middle, end, they all kind of blend no, it, together. Yeah. It's not like a evolving flavor right. in your mouth. It's just... It it's is, like, it, it's, it's, it's like, a mass flavor. Yeah. yeah. I and like it, it. It comes very nice up front mm-hmm. and it stays with you and in the end is, you know, very... Um, it's not clingy. You know, it's a nice mouthfeel. And mm-hmm. it, you know, it, it is. It's a very I rounded agree. flavor profile. Yep. So now that we've really touched on how good this is, mm-hmm. should we go on to the next? Yeah, I'll get the water boiling okay. for the next. And as I do that, um, I think we can decide what order we want to do the teas in. Okay. So I'll bring out the other tea leaves, and then we can decide together okay. what order we want to drink. Okie dokie. I like this. <laughs> you see this? We like next this. Next one I we got here. This. Yeah, Gen Mai Cha. Should we boil so the water Gen first? Gen Mai Cha. Or... Um, it, it doesn't take long. Okay. This one's a, also a loose leaf green tea. This is described as a bold, rich, premium green tea with roasted rice. Okay. It's got roasted and popped rice in it. Yeah, which so is kind of cool. I, I kind of want to do that next, even without hearing the other ones, just because it's also a green tea. Mm-hmm. Do you well, have other green teas? There's just just these two. This is the only other green tea for today. Okay. Yeah. I, so we could do that. It could be easily comparable. I'm fine. We, I'm fine with that. And yep. the other, we could so we could finish that one, and then after this next green tea, we could go on a sending price maybe or however indie i don't know that's just kind of the way that sometimes we do it 
since there's no alcohol content, we can't mm. gu- guide ourselves on that. I don't exactly. know. We're going in freestyle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. then you can kind of get the difference in the cold green yeah, versus the hot, hot green. Hot green, yep. Okay, so we'll do this next. I'll get the water going. I think it's a good suggestion. Hot green. So in the tea world, how how snobbish is it really? Is there, is there a snobbishness like... Like a culture of people who think they're like, oh, I am a refined tea drinker, you know? I think so. Okay. So it's kind of, yeah, we'll pick, it'll pick you up. Yeah. So so essentially, it's kind of like every niche thing. Coffee has its thing. Yeah. Wine has its thing. Yep. Whiskey definitely does too. Probably not to the same extent as um, other niches. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, I'm sure T does too. We're gonna to find that. We're gonna find that niche, Zach. Yeah, we're gonna get I, did, I figure just with the sheer amount of people, right, worldwide that drink tea, that it, it perhaps would not have that kind of following so on I, the higher uh, end. I'm curious about this next one. You said it has rice in it. it is does. roasted there... or toasted? You said roasted. Roasted, roasted. rice. So is there? Um, What's the purpose? Is it an added flavor it's going to give or uh, some other quality? So I think it's a trida- <laughs> traditional Japanese. <laughs> no, <laughs> I just that's put them fine. together. Traditional. It's a traditional. I say um about every three seconds. <laughs> so <laughs> Just a traditional Japanese flavor that a lot of Japanese people really like. Interesting. That roasty, yeah, roasty addition to the green tea. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try um, to look for that, I think, when we... We do that, see yep. if it has like a maybe a, some sort of coating on the tongue. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I don't know exactly why it has the appeal or why they're combined. It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so as far as the differences between, you know, different colors of tea, green, white, you got yellow, black, and you can also have oolong tea. And black tea is also sometimes referred to as red tea, so it's kind of confusing, but the difference comes in the level of oxidation. Okay. That the leaves are allowed and the processing. When does the oxidation occur throughout just throughout the entire time it's been cut from its bush? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it starts when it's picked and then maybe ends with the heating process. Okay. But I'm not exactly sure. I just know green tea is very low on the oxidation level and that's why it's so vibrant and fresh Mm -hmm. because it's, you know, preserved pretty close to its original state as a fresh leaf. And then when you get down to black tea, it can be oxidized as much as 80% from Hmm. what it was. And that's why it's got such a dark color and the flavor is much more bold. Yeah. Interesting. So those bold flavors, do you think it's better to drink those hot than it is to drink them cold? Yeah. You want hotter water for extracting the flavors gotcha that makes Versus, sense i knew that that's another big difference i should have known that <laughs> if you're trying to get <laughs> we, into we tea. literally work in the coffee industry i know how brewing works <laughs> <laughs> so what's the optimal temperature or optimal brew method for black tea just I just tea. tease. Well, I guess if there's yeah. more different ones, you know, uh, mm-hmm. this green tea that we're going to be trying, what's the optimal in your opinion? I think it's 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So that's colder. It than, is colder. Than the coffee. It's like 190. Yeah. It's all just shy of 200. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. almost boiling, but not quite. Mm-hmm. Just so, enough to scald you. Just enough to really make you not want to drink more. It burns. I don't <laughs> want coffee anymore. <laughs> Ooh, it makes you feel good. Wait, yes, I do. Yeah. Oh, but this gives me energy and the runs. Bye. <laughs> so the water has been boiled, so we'll cool it to the optimum temperature. Okay. We use a very scientific method where you just blow on the water. <laughs> you just feel is it. Is it cool yet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can, I feel the energy of the water. It's speaking to me. The molecule. No, that's just the tea. My hand. <laughs> yeah. My hands are sweating. Nope, that's the condensation. Yes, you can. Slide in on the table. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Crisscross. I should have got some wet erase markers. I could have put some initials on there. If I think I have any. Mm-hmm. Well, just three of us. I think it would be okay. So, get some of this out in the bowl. And then 
Ooh, before it's brewed. This is bird seed. <laughs> There's um obviously the base green tea smell, but then there is a there is another smell there. It's buttery, like burnt butter to me. Oh really? Yep. The smell is like when I put my rice in the microwave too long. It's got a hay smell, which is just a tea, you yep. know, in my opinion. You know, kind of a uh, a grassy hay, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was like a maybe some sort of baking spice that mm. I got. Stuff the nose. I wish I cooked more, then I would know <laughs> some different spices. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just learn to pick up things, yep. you know, when cupping coffee and looking for oh. limited editions oh, yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah full-bodied that gets thrown out a, a lot, lot you yep. know this has a nutty flavor what kind of nut <laughs> you know a, like a walnut Ooh, candle candle time this will make my uh palate just increase mm-hmm. so zach when you brought up about you know like is there a snotty part of tea um tea drinkers mm-hmm. i saw a video once of a guy who's you know like a self-proclaimed tea expert and he was talking about the best way to actually drink your tea. I guess even you should be drinking it in three sips, he said. The Completely. First, yeah. Oh, okay. Like if you're having a little cup like that to get the best flavor and to like taste it so best. So you mean like... <laughs> or, or one, like... Three, swallow, okay. two, swallow. Interesting. So maybe we'll, let's try that with this one. Okay. And see if it makes a difference. What if it's too hot? It's what, so what, hot. If my, what if my poor mouth is like... <laughs> And he's going to look at you, Zach, and just be like, do it. (laughs) Just going to hold that that hot match to your skin. (laughs) A real man would drink this in two sips. That's why we give you three. (laughs) And then there's also tea ceremony, which for this one, I'll do a little bit of that. But I feel like the... Most useful thing about tea ceremony is when they heat up the tea ware beforehand so that it stays oh, hot for longer. Yep. And it's also kind of cool if you watch it online, you can see like the movements they have are very precise. You can tell these people who pour the tea are very highly trained to have it be like just a certain way. So it would be wrong to call them baristas. <laughs> 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 they might not like that. They, were, they wouldn't even understand. Like, they're you. like, I trained for 15 years <laughs> yeah. to do this. Before. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, there's some really good baristas, you know, going to SCA. I've, yeah. There have probably been baristas that have trained for 15 years and, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, off subject, but <laughs> it's probably a similar thing just in the tea world. I never thought about that. So okay. is it is it more of a, a traditional thing or is it viewed as an art form? Because I know kind of like yeah. baristas can take that into more of an art form um but obviously you know there's a tradition with a lot of things mm-hmm. so i do think it's very traditional okay depending on um what country like the tea right. ceremony is originated from um but yeah they're all different but they all have long traditions I and see. it's also an art form mm-hmm. right yep so it's probably yeah. like tai chi or something where there's like it's the moving of energy or whatever. Yeah. But like, yeah, I saw something online that was like, tea is the combination of the four elements. You know, you have the water. Tea is the avatar. Oh, you have yeah. water that carries the flavor. Earth, and then, which is the pots. Earth the that pots. comes yeah. from, yeah, the pots, and then that's where the leaves come from. Yep. And then air is what cools the water to the perfect temperature mm-hmm. to brew the tea, and then fire that heats the water so that you can make the tea. Mm-hmm. I was like, or electricity. <gasps> Whoa. <Yeah. laughs> or that the power of the electric kettle. Tea is like <laughs> That's why we that's why we lit the candle though, so we can have some fire. Okay. Check the temperature again. Yeah. We have a super It says it's hot. Yeah. It's hot. It's hot. Perfect. Perfect. That's good. Beautiful. So I'm gonna do a little bit of preheating. Get rid of these old tea. 
I wish we had our camera set up for this, Zach. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to have to work on that. Yeah. So we can have future podcast episodes, video. But this is the one that we would have really wanted. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, Carter's not here. Everyone no. wants to see Carter. Yeah. That's true. Carter's... Carter, where are you at? Yeah, Carter's sheer just presence makes things just more enjoyable. Yes. It's funny. Certain yeah. things. So, yeah. We were dripping a little I have water a on the table. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't. he's got a headache. Which he, was, he would have fixed. I told him. I'm like, it's going to be nice and relaxing. And whatever problems you have right now are going to go away once you start having tea. He's like, nah. I'm going to watch, I'm gonna go watch anime. <laughs> but now we can go tell him about the, skin, the helpful properties that help skin and things. Sure skin and things. Is. And headaches. Yep. Because there's a caffeine, if you, yeah. caffeine deficiency. Right. Like we have caffeine deficiencies. <laughs> My hands are shaking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why don't you have a manual in your car? Well, see, oh, you just can't drive it? No, uh, <laughs> really bad it's, caffeine deficiency. It goes from first to second, and I don't even try it. Now, on my way to work today, I was... So, so right now you're warming up the cups. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're going to take less of the... It's going to take less of the uh, heat out. Correct. Yeah. Similar things uh, have been done in coffee. I know that. Uh, but uh, usually we don't abide to that because it's not really... It's like my mug Ooh, when I get my morning coffee. Uh, it's fuller than I thought. I guess yeah. it's dark in here. <laughs> we need more candles. Yeah. More candles. More candles. Then, begin with in the recent news, matches. A small house in the middle of the country burns <laughs> from tea ceremony. It's on the news with Zach. <laughs> well, so we were having a tea ceremony. Um, hey, we, we, carpet's really flammable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, how many candles did you light? Well, we started with just one. But then we got to 12. We got to 12. 13. 13. Inevitably, the 17. Yeah. And then the candles kind of started all forming into one big candle once they all started melting. And then we forgot about our whiskey collection. <laughs> that became Molotov cocktail <laughs> waiting to happen. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I'd throw myself on the whiskey. To, to protect the whiskey or, or us. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. can think of any way Either way, you whichever, about whichever way it makes... Though. Yeah. It's like yeah. jumping on a grenade. Yeah. I'm protecting everything everything except the grenade is not killing it it's like a throwing another grenade at a grenade <laughs> to stop the grenade it's to stop the grenade from setting the other grenade up. Yep. okay so you might die but it'll be not as bad right you'll maybe have open casket <laughs> that way you might get to have <laughs> you might be able to it depends yep <laughs> So now we've got the right temperature water for green tea. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that a lot of people might not know is brewing times, how much of a difference it makes. I don't know if it makes much of a difference for coffee, does it? It, it does. Um, it's more on the method you do it, but yeah. Yeah. Because most, like if you're using a machine to brew your coffee, it's going to be the same amount of time. Otherwise, you can have a pour over method or a yeah. French press, and those are going to have different times too, and yeah. depending how strong you want it. And then. Uh, Medium versus dark it's roast. It's customizable. It's. Mm-hmm. I would say, from the vibe I'm getting from this, it's coffee's probably not as important. I know there's gonna be people that probably think opposite, but uh, for the most. But part, they're wrong. No, ball, yeah. Ballpark. <laughs> ballpark estimates. You know, it's kind of. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be similar. So what's the brewing yeah. time for us then? For this green tea. Yep. They say like sixty to ninety seconds. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's nothing. Yeah. For some green tea fast. containers, yeah. it'll tell well, you like two to cup, three minutes. For three, four ounce yeah. cups. Yeah. I should for, know this, but it's like, what, four minutes, five minutes for French press? Yes, yeah, four minutes. Yeah, four minutes. Yep. Okay, I'm going to see if it's ready now. Which is the cheapest and price performance, possibly the best way to okay. make coffee at home mm-hmm. is a French press. I wonder how quickly you need to brew Turkish coffee. That's pretty quick. Uh, I don't know. I had a mocha pot, which is not really the same thing. But... <laughs> what is Turkish coffee? Well, Turkish is usually the grind, but there's also the... I, yeah. I believe Turkish is a style or a method of... I can be both, grind. but Zach, normally if somebody's referring to that, they're going to be referring to the grind. 
which is actually finer than espresso typically. Yeah. It's like a powdered sugar consistency. It's, yeah, or more. It's like a right. it's like a powdered it's like a flour. Yeah. Like right. Like yeah. Uh, the baking flour. Mm-hmm. Um and you and I had Turkish coffee when we were in New York, remember? Really? Yep. At that one uh uh what was the country of origin? It was probably like some Lebanese place. It wasn't actually a Turkish place, but it, <laughs> it was a Turkish. but it was, it was, they, had, they were serving Turkish coffee. It's like when a Mexican they gives do. you a euro, you know. Oh, the Mexican gives you a euro. They 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 make good euros. Oh. Off the bat, this has like a yeah. Oh, it's the, well, it's the rice. I already forgot about the, the rice. rice. I was gonna say there's a grainy smell to yeah. it. Yeah, it does smell a little bit buttery, Zach. I can see what you're saying there. Yeah. It smells like a wild rice. Yeah. Like a wet, kind of... wet wild rice. You know what it reminds me of? This reminds me of Minnesota ELC, Environmental Learning Center, Wolf Ridge, up past Duluth. Um, we would have wild rice soup uh, for dinner sometimes. And uh, it was, I hated it because mm-hmm. I was like fifth grade. And, and everyone's a picky eater in fifth grade. Well, there was something about it. I still don't love what like wild rice soup for me has to be chunky and thick. I can't stand. Well, this was this soup. wasn't like progressive. This was like right. No cr- no cream. Yep. Um. And no yeah no cream mm-hmm. just super watery, and What's they up? they harvested it themselves. Should we do the three sip? Should we? Because Indy's uh, prepping some snacks. Let's so go, let's go on the taste. Right. This feels really warm. Yeah, you taste the grainy note. Mm-hmm. On the... Oh wow! Yeah, it's just like wild rice. Yeah, just like wild rice. It's more like a soup with green tea. In it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second sip. Yeah, more of the same. Yeah. So brothy. So brothy. it is very. Bro- it's almost salty. Almost like a little bit of salty and cream. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. We're trying to the three sip method, Indy. All right. Okay. Last last sip. Yep. Let's be tea snobs. Mm. It's a very consistent flavor profile yeah. all through. That that third one right at the beginning was really savory, but also because that was a lot bigger sip mm. than the rest. My second sip was very savory. Yeah. I, I feel like the first sip I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. Um. Second and third definitely. Uh, pretty much the same flavor profile on the sips yeah and then through the taste uh end of it it was very similar savory more on the end though yeah this is so relaxing like that's what i was gonna say i feel this, relaxed it, this all instantly sudden. puts me in a vibe you know i'm like yeah <laughs> this is nice nice and warm yeah. it's warm and relaxing kind of like warms your heart <laughs> more so just it warms it warms my belly yeah. and my my throat and my tongue. There's a thing that we yes. we know as, excuse me, Kentucky hug. A Kentucky hug. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a nice, you know, you could feel it run down. That kind of usually refers to that. Yeah. And that was kind of similar, you know. It was, uh, this is legit actual warmth and yeah. not numbing of the it's blood warm. vessels. <laughs> it's because it's 170 degrees. But. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is hot. Well, that one, it's very different from the first one. Yeah. I like Mainly this, because actually, of the grain I, notes. Yeah. I liked it because of the the green notes, and it was. I thought the first one had a nice silky texture. This wasn't silky like the first, this but it like was buttery. Yeah, smooth like the first, but yeah. not silky like the first. Mm-hmm. I like Can that. you say smooth again? Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish we had Sebastian back. He's got a wonderful, just his his voice is so quiet. Yet the phonemes that, that pronounces from his mouth are so. <laughs> delicate and discernible to the human ear i love it is sebastian one of the viewers one of the he said he watched a, a, one or two of these in preparation for his mm-hmm. guesthood so and you you and dad did too right yep yeah last night actually yep <laughs> well that's fun any tips for us don't say that no I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, no, that, I'm was a, that was a long pause mm-hmm. <laughs> no Second long pause. Um, I liked it. It was very good. I appreciated that one. Yep. 
Ne- yeah, next I'm glad one. You liked it. Yeah. Yeah. So we never actually went through all of them before. Like I said, we would, but now let's do that. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. We got. The, we got, we got oh. choose. We have a choose our own adventure path yeah. in front of us. I'd like to do all of them. I restart the game at the end and go through <laughs> all of them in a different order. Yeah. This one is going to be a first time for me trying. Is white tea. It's very interesting to me because I love green tea. Is my current favorite. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just because of how light it is, and I don't know. I just always end up craving it. But white tea, I guess, is kind of similar. It's kind of mellow, mm-hmm. like a green tea, but it's even more mellow and has a little more sweetness natural sweetness so can, is we, this... can we drink some more of that green tea is that just ready to go yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna have some more have some more yeah i can't really get up yeah so yeah white tea and this one's from the himalayas oh, like that the i was mentioning sea salt. earlier or sea, mm. salt. It's pink sea salt so where does the white tea leaves um in accordance to green and black, black being darker and green being lighter, essentially. So where, where does that fall in? I think white tea is um, oxidized in the sun, under okay. the sun. And Interesting. That's it makes so, it this color, but it isn't highly oxidized. It's okay. It's somewhat similar to green tea Okay. on that level. So that'll be fun to give this a try. It's from India. So yeah, me and Dylan were just noting before that this green tea is really brothy. Would you agree? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we got it right, Dylan. <laughs> I think sticker. it would go good with like a with a dinner. You know. Yeah. What you, What would you pair with this with? Um. Probably something not super spicy, but I feel like it's like a. I'd pair this with like a like a creamy pasta or something a pasta like a pasta i'm thinking soba soba, soba. noodles and like a yeah i was kind of thinking like a sorry. some sort of like a nut spicy pho mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but something mm-hmm. this, oh, nice. I mean, this is already like that very brothy in that sense <laughs> yeah it, it puts me in that vibe though sure oh yeah i feel yeah. like it's a good fall tea i feel like mm-hmm. all, all, all warm beverages are good fall beverages yes so and me being minnesota except for just hot water i like <laughs> cold things and then wearing shorts yep while doing them yep <laughs> the summer's a pain here just because it that's when the temperature is like supposed like to be Florida. nice <laughs> yeah like the if we didn't have the humidity or the bugs but had the temperature it'd be it'd be great you know but that's not what life is like here in the midwest i was reading that just today the corn production has a lot to do with the amount of humidity in our these farm states so we need to burn the corn now. We, we need to get rid of the corn basically and yeah. also now now so so the, the the term calorie is used for energy we're essentially making our own amazon rainforest Basic, made out of corn corn yeah <laughs> and oh and there's a this was on reddit so all the all the comments were about how bad corn is right because most of this corn that we do grow is either used for feed for animals or corn starch or just made into or corn ethanol. syrup or ethanol right yeah very little bit of it is actually like eaten you know right and so the amount of nutrients it takes from the ground and then is put, used for things that don't go back into the ground mm-hmm. is, to, is a ton mm-hmm. so it, it leaves a lot of agricultural balance or negative balance you know? right and then also it takes so they use the, i was just saying they use they use the word calorie here as far as expending energy for the machines right okay so a, it takes a, a ca- like the the number of calories expended via the oil they use to run these farms right is the same as the amount they're getting out of the corn calories that could be could be absorbed mm-hmm. whereas that's today Back in the 70s, it was like one calorie expended in oil was 40 calories gained in corn. Right. Now it's a one-to-one. We've lost 40 times. You know, we're at, I guess I don't know what that fraction is, right? One fortieth of our growing potential that we were at before. <laughs> I meant decimal. Yeah, right. I, know. I don't know what that decimal is, one fortieth, but very... What was I even saying? Something oh. about... Uh, we were talking humidity. about weather. 
Oh, the humidity. The Midwest. Yeah. Anyway, that's and that's so, why it's that. So please, let's stop growing corn. Let's don't just stop growing corn. corn altogether. I don't even eat sweet corn. It's not even that good for you. You can't even digest most of it. It just comes out as little poop kernels. Well, the, most of the corn that ethanol uses is not even sweet corn. Mm-hmm. But anyways, let's back on track. Why Minnesota? Why? why? Let's go why? back to the native corn yeah. crops. Yeah. Little okay. little small corns. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the ears of pretty, corn that are like little pretty ones. What is this? Yeah, like blue corn, <laughs> mm-hmm. striped corn. That'd be fun. Exactly. That'd be fun. Yeah. The only corn we need let's, let's is do that. to make whiskey. Okay. So that was, was, what's but, the next option then? Okay, so I also brought some Earl Grey, mm-hmm. which is a black tea. Okay. Um, so we can give that a try. These are tea bags, so we'll see the difference, you know, in quality see. with these, and um. For those who don't know, Earl Grey is just black tea with bergamot oil, which is a citrus fruit. Ooh. And Interesting. This, this tea has um, bergamot oil from Italy in it. That's kind of fun. Okay. And then I brought some Ruibos tea, which is a herb and it isn't technically even considered a tea then because um, it doesn't come from the tea plant, but it's got Ruibos, lavender, and lemon balm. Very relaxing. That sounds exciting. Yeah, it's more hmm. flavorful. Mm-hmm. I like flavor. And then I brought some different uh, herbs and flowers that I picked myself. Two of them are wildflowers. So I got some elderflower. Mm-hmm. So, so you okay? And, so you found these? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, this one um, I picked last spring, early summer, and it smells really creamy, and it kind of smells like the scent of summer to me. Pass it around so you guys can give a good. So how long did you let the uh, the flowers or herbs or whatever you picked? You let them dry essentially, mm-hmm. and how long did you let yeah, them dry? Yeah, I think for about a week, just out of direct sunlight in a well ventilated area. Oh yeah, very fragrant, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There, there, there's a familiar smell to it. I can't huh. put. Yeah, I can't put. These are all foreign to me. I don't go outside if you can't tell, but <laughs> yeah, that it'll be, be fun to see what you guys mm-hmm. think of yeah. that. Um, once it's in the tea, you know, because you still get the strong flavor mm-hmm. or the strong scent. So this was what <laughs> did you say? What you picked um, that you have that you're gonna? Yeah, so so far just the elderflowers, and then next I got some wild okay. rosebuds and leaves. So these are from up in Ely, Minnesota. Not pronounced Eli. <laughs> Eli. <laughs> yeah. No. As our friend from England mm-hmm. likes to call it. Yep. Yeah, these are also really fragrant. Can... Am I, I going to like this... get high after like like just smelling any of these? We'll see. She's so The high. scent of wild rose. Yeah, this is, ooh. Like Cleopatra. And then last I have lemon That's verbena. That's a good smell. One of the top like herbs for me yeah. on my list. Lemon verbena. Interesting. This this reminds me of this it's, smells like something you'd, something you'd put as like a garnish on like a dish. Yeah. It's very colorful. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be kind of expensive if you were to buy it, just because it's kind of a laborious thing. Right. To pick it as a bud and then deep dry it and you know find it way up north. So. Inside way there. up there. Way Try up to find there. the mystical Eli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we did rosebuds, we did elderflower, and this is lemon verbena that lemon I grew. Verbena. Oh, so you grew this one? This mm-hmm. is good stuff. What's the hey. calorie ratio that you got on this? Do you uh... know? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> That's such a serious so question. <laughs> what do you think of that? Sarcastic. Set? Uh, well, I th- it smells. Sounds More like desserty, a... yeah. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Sounds like a candle, kind of. Yeah, all these other ones have smelled very herb-like. And, yes. You know. Yeah, I like to try that that third one, the lemon verbena. Okay, yeah, I was thinking we could do a blend, an herbal herbal tea blend of those three. Oh. Uh, yeah, together. That sounds good to me. I think yeah. they'd pair well together. The wild rose and the elderflower has a lot of health benefits. That's cool. cool. That's what I need. Cool. Let's get some more. Water, water going. So water is composed of H two O. But how much of each? 
How many twos? But did you know how heavy many water H's? has? No, I'm kidding. Uh, H2O2. <laughs> no, don't drink that, please. Don't drink that. Don't make that. Please don't please make that. Don't please make don't make it. that. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Carter would say something like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> He totally would. For no reason. If for, yeah, absolutely no reason. <laughs> That's why we miss some of those, because we need, we need those in our life. <laughs> it's like doing some tedious task with music in the background. Yep. It's just like, you know it needs to be there. Yep. Otherwise, it just makes it worse. Oh, yeah. Carter's that music. His personalities add so much value to our lives. Oh, yeah. I feel like we need some, well, like right now, actually, we, we need like some relaxing, uh, smooth eight, jazz, eight, or, yeah. reform jazz. We must <laughs> develop, <laughs> yeah, develop an appreciation for freeform jazz. Okay, you're ready. I'll just say we need like some, uh, yeah, music, you know, like what's the one stringed instrument from China? Koto. Oh, Koto, China? yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Koto, too. That'd be kind of a one string instrument. Yeah, we we won't do it, but copyright infringement. Yep, I can put like what like a super. You know how like those classic old two thousand six YouTube videos where like it shows up, it's like a fade in black title, and they just crank <laughs> they like they crank the music for the title. I miss two thousand six YouTube. It's like it's like Lincoln. It's like Wake Me Up Inside or <laughs> Lincoln Park at like a hundred percent volume, and then the actual video is like fifteen percent. And you get those kids are like guys. I made a video. You guys want to see it? Yeah. And he's like, pulls it up in middle school. Yeah. Like, HP. At the Good life. times. Good. Good times. Panzer, you can't oh, be in a, here. You'll mess up in recording. Here. Panzer, out. Go. Oh. Go. We know. Go. We love he's, him, but he can't be you here. You can sit in the doorway. Go. Or there. Oh. Wait, you guys can see him. Kind of. Maybe. Maybe. Hey, pooch. So if you're listening to this, or watching this, Comment what your favorite tea is. And if this podcast made you think any differently about tea. Arnold Palmer. <laughs> Arnold Palmer. I, I like Arnie Palmer just because it's Arnold Palmer. Yeah. So let's give the white tea a try. Or, or we're jumping right to white tea. Ooh. Yeah. Excellent. I think we should finish with the uh, herbal tea. Okay. It's the most relaxing. That's, that's the most... Uh, it's custom. It's custom. You know, no one else can make that custom the way painted. we did. Not. Oh, uh, my other pants. Take off your other pants. There might. There, oh, there's that Gerber. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. It's just. No, it's in there. Yeah. There is a just a regular blade. I think it's on the other side. Oh my god, dog. So, so how Dylan, I saw your little newspaper clip that's on the fridge downstairs. Oh yeah. Somebody gave that to us. <laughs> it's so cute. It's from 2009, I think. Oh wow. But It's kind of fun to see how little you've changed. <laughs> <laughs> right? Whether that's like good or things, not, yes. The things you're interested in, like... You said your favorite show was Mythbusters, and favorite movie Arkham Knight, right? He's staying. Oh, the favorite game. Yep. Favorite game, I mean, yeah. And like favorite car. Even back then, you were into cars. I think the Ram Charger. I missed the Ram Charger. Yeah. Woo! Here we go. Ram Charger. Ram Charger. Ooh, this is this is cool. Okay. This puppy likes to get around. Hey, pooch. Hey, Panzer. Oh. Go, 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 go. <laughs> and now we resume. Yep. Don't worry, audience. We love them. So, Dylan, what made you want to start the podcast? Well, I think it was, there was a time back when, a number of years ago, we were talking about doing it. 
uh, with a few more people actually, mm-hmm. and then puppy's back. We had so many great ideas that we talk about at work, and then at the time it's fresh. You know, it's like it was. I mean, it obviously, it was hilarious to us, but some people said that uh, that was pretty funny. You know, like you should record it, <laughs> honestly, and then we started and we forgot all the good ideas yeah, and then we started yeah, this one exactly well it's essentially yeah i mean uh, carter and zach recently turned 21 and we were never planning on turning into a Whiskey, beverage bev- adult beverage podcast yeah we, we just want to do entertainment movies video games comics and we still might it's just we kind of hit a stride with whiskey because that's something we, we all really like mm-hmm that's you know essentially that's where it started from this point but uh it was something that we always kind of wanted to do that we finally started acting on it so. yeah. it's a fun thing and you too can start your own podcast <laughs> next week or uh, not next week but next time uh we'll probably be going to steve's house which he'll be on the first time, and we'll be doing a wine tasting. Ooh. Yeah, well, I want to do sake too. Probably after that, maybe okay. get maybe get Sebastian back for that one because he has a nice sake at his house. Does he? He does. I went. I went over. I snuck. I kind of snuck into his place without permission one time, <laughs> and by snuck, I mean I was let in by a mutual friend, and uh, he, he he hands me. <laughs> this this like mason jar i mean like try this like try this japanese whiskey and i drink it like this is not japanese whiskey, not japanese whiskey. <laughs> i because I, at first i thought it was i really Sorry. did i was like mm, this is really wow that this is weird whiskey you know i'm like wait a minute this isn't whiskey <laughs> it's sake which sebastian confirmed is there enough sakis to do, or do we do we do like a an odd? Oh yeah. Looks high quality. I paid twenty dollars for this. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of sakis. It smells more citrusy. Hmm. Wow. It's, yeah, I don't get, it's a little, I guess a little citrusy. I, guess. I mean, compared to the... Yeah. It's more lemony. Mm-hmm. And, and this doesn't have... This isn't the lemon... What is it called? Verbosa? Verbena. Verbena. Herbosa's Fury. Yeah, Herbosa's Fury is ready. Anyway, yeah, there's lots of sake we can try. It's different. Is there? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff we have yet to do that we would still like to do. Yeah. Um, just, we're so far that we could do weekly. But we're both too lazy, and also, and that's a lot of editing. It's a lot of editing. It's a lot of driving, mm-hmm. and it's it's a big investment, you know. Mm-hmm. We just need to take the podcast and push it someplace else. Push it someplace I, else. Yeah, I need to move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is 190 degree water. Uh oh. Uh oh. So is this a kind of recommendation for white tea, or is this we're just gonna? I'm compare sure it's a little bit hotter than the recommendation okay maybe like 10 degrees hotter it's just taking a while to cool yeah and i just figured it'd be kind of interesting to see if it is a little more bitter than when we did the green tea. Mm-hmm. i see so we'll let that heat for a minute so you're using your ceramic teapot with a filter yep. inside so that's how she's brewing the last two and then um, just for fun, pouring it into a glass teapot. For pouring, okay. Into the small cups. Yep. And in between each um, different type of tea, I'm rinsing it with hot water. I see. And simultaneously warming it back up. Yeah. With the hot water. Yep. I'm so calm right now. Mm-hmm. It's tranquil. <laughs> this is a very tranquil beverage. Like whiskey, whiskey can make you tired, you know. Whiskey this, can, but this but... makes you like just so mellow. Yep. It's like in the same sense that a drug might make you just like ah, oh, 
like a muscle, like a muscle relaxer, you know, it just makes you like, oh. <laughs> but this, this isn't muscle relaxing. It's just like tension in like your mind. It's like, oh, it's gone. So, Indy, how did you get into tea? Uh, hmm. I'm not exactly sure. If I think about it, um, probably with my interest in Japanese culture. Okay. To start with. I was never really that into coffee, too. Right. So I think when I started wanting something caffeinated, I just went to tea right away. But that was before I started looking into, like, the proper way of brewing tea. Mm -hmm. So at first, I kind of just had, like, your typical green tea bags that I poured boiling water over. And it was so bitter. Right. I didn't like the taste, so I added, like, honey and lemon juice. But then It's really good with honey, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. And then I learned through YouTube mostly. YouTube is like Good my favorite thing ever. How you can get the really delicious flavors based on what tea leaves you get and how you brew it. So is it is it hard to find good quality uh, tea mm. here? Or is it, you know, or, or this, essentially does it come down to just going to the right stores that specialize in this? Yeah, I think so. You know, like we were talking about tea Von a little bit earlier. That was probably, like, one of my first introductions of tea. But a lot of those teas are very, like, artificially flavored. Okay. It seems like. Mm -hmm. Like, they smell really good when you're in the store. Right. And then you drink it, and it's, like, it's It's, flavored by the sugar. It's like the um, uh, fabric softener aisle at a a, a store. It smells amazing, Mm -hmm. but it never quite smells, like that does you know yeah oh, like taste. lots of tea mix <laughs> you, for, you know the forbidden fruit yeah. Tide pods yeah the the um <laughs> da- the downy does not taste <laughs> anything at all like teddy bears so i'm not surprised <laughs> when tivana shut down around okay. here so yeah but as far as getting like good teas around here i think the asian markets are a good way to go yeah. local asian markets yeah okay. local, yeah. Asian, Your local markets, asian grandma or... will tell you where to buy it yeah so Tea could probably get expensive, but like, how is it, um, you know, ballpark estimates and then how much can you get for your money and, Hmm. you know, what's a good value? It probably depends on where you're buying it too. Right. Um, I think it probably costs a little bit more online maybe than in the markets. I feel like Asian markets always have such good prices Mm -hmm. for stuff, but if you... Probably done like, brewing now, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. should probably pour it. Can you still hear me if I'm talking to you? Yeah, we'll we'll hear you. It'll pick up. But yeah, like this white tea that's you know really high quality. It's very clear compared to the yeah, green tea. Yeah, look at how light it is. Wow. It was fifteen dollars for that container. And how much so, do you get in a container? One and a half ounces of tea. Okay. And I think we said this, but how many, how much do you think they would produce? Like how much tea could you make from it? Yeah. Okay. So that's another interesting topic because just earlier today I learned that, you know, like there's, there's two distinct tea styles, tea brewing styles. There's the Western style and the Eastern style. Okay. Of what? Of China of, or Asia? Asia. Okay. Yeah, I think. Western style Thank you. is using less tea leaves. I thought mine was the other one. Oh, yeah, mine's the other one. You're right. Less tea leaves, um, hotter Ooh. water, and you're brewing it for longer. That honey note came through. Let's see. A little bit of the citrus mm-hmm. is also there, yeah, too. Yeah, it's definitely got a little sweet scent. So, yeah, I think if you're brewing it Western style, like it, it'll go longer. Um, okay. So this is probably like the this is a good example of a Western style because we brewed it for like two and a half minutes at least, right? Yeah, and I use less tea leaves. Three sip method. Three sip method. Right. Okay, this here we hot. go. Ooh. Ooh, I like this. It's less. I'm gonna be honest. I can't taste anything, at all. Really? Yeah, nothing. Let me give it a, another try. It's a good mouthfeel. It's creamy again. Not as creamy as the... Mm-hmm. It actually kind of reminds me of the scent of elderflowers. Like, 
I don't know mm. if I just if it's because I smelled them earlier. It's a little sweet on the end, mm-hmm. but it's definitely not as. I mean, the other one's gonna have <laughs> dog. <laughs> the other one's definitely gonna have a lot more body to it from our standpoint because it has the rice and other things than the tea that are gonna add mm-hmm. uh, different things to it. But this white tea straight up is definitely light, I would say, on body and flavor yeah. to For us. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I honestly can't. This tastes like hot water. Okay. I can't do anything. To me, it definitely does not taste plain. It has a distinct flavor like nothing I've ever tasted before. Yeah, I would, I'd probably say I'm between probably both of you right now. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I can very much understand what Zach's picking up uh, mm-hmm. and saying, but I also do pick up on some of the initial flavors it's mostly the front and the end mm-hmm. the end right. i get some sweetness the front i get some of the honey in between it is kind of watery yeah but the that middle, might just be the way i brewed it right now that's true might well like you said there's gonna be a lot of different methods you, you know you kind of play around with it and tailor it to your personal flavor this is nothing but hot leaf juice <laughs> uncle that's what all tea is how could a member of my own family say something so horrible? <laughs> the disrespect. She's going to get those matches out. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, next time I would probably burns? brew it <laughs> exactly. longer. Oh, you know, just hanging out, drinking tea, drinking tea, saying I'll stuff. I'll just give you, shoot you a look like that. Yeah, the death glare. <laughs> yeah. so what, do you, what do you guys think about this one? Yeah, I can see why white tea is normally paired with other flavors. Mm. When I looked up white tea online, a lot of it is like a, a blend. Okay. Instead of just the pure tea leaves. I see. I think it'd be really good with a blend just because it's Do so Do people light. blend uh, green tea leaves, black tea leaves, white, mm. etc. together to make kind of a cohesive blend? I never thought about that. Not that I know of. Okay. But that'd be interesting mm-hmm. to try. Interesting. you could both notes at the same time hmm. maybe we need to try it possibly yeah episode two double mm-hmm. tea bagged and that's the tea <laughs> so when you were saying how like relaxing this is it makes you feel it made me think about how like depending on what beverage people share together mm-hmm. and like i feel like it kind of shapes the conversation right mm-hmm. oh we completely agree mm-hmm. you know we i think there's been a few times on the podcast that we've referenced, you know, um, different things being drank. Well, like the camping episode, you know, we talked about that and how um, the whiskeys that we brought out and kind of uh, focused uh, on that. You know, we each had a strong feeling towards scotches for us, mm-hmm. represented camping and the memories associated with that and You know, of course, everyone kind of has a story that'll sometimes focus around uh, a certain type of whiskey. Sometimes I know um, something traumatic happens. People, you know, it's like bullet whiskey was there. And that's what, you know, me and my friend were drinking. And Mm -hmm. not because that's my favorite. Yeah. But but it holds a memory. It happened to be bullet that was there. Right. And I could totally see, you know, the same thing with this tea. More so than coffee you know coffee doesn't have oh, yeah. the same thing but i feel like this the tea does yeah. share i think a, a cup of joe i mean coffee is by its nature repulsive you know mm. i mean literally the coffee bean is it's it's um the caffeine part of the bean is literally there as an insecticide that's what that's why ca- caffeine kind of exists in mm-hmm. the plant world is it kills the bugs that tries to eat the plant right so that the plant could reproduce, and then we're like, "Oh my gosh, caffeine makes us feel really good." <laughs> so then we start, so then we start drinking it, and then it's 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 quite a repulsive flavor until you start picking out the notes, right. roasting it right, brewing it right, mm-hmm. you know. But this is not repulsive in any way. There's nothing. There's nothing to hate. Yeah, I can't. I can't. There's no tea flavors, and I'm like, "Oh, it's bitter." It's like, eh. you know, it's like. Mm. It's so gentle. Yeah, and that's all in the way you make it, too. Because mm-hmm. when I first started drinking tea, that's how I felt. I was like, ugh, this is oh, you did? bitter. Yeah, because oh, okay. I use super hot water. Yeah. 
just straight out of the boiling kettle. Mm -hmm. But next we're going to have a black tea. So cool. we'll see what you think. Can I have some more of the, the white tea? Just yeah, be, of course. Just being that we have some and we're waiting. White tea. Thank you. I would say, <laughs> because every conversation that I have uh, always goes to whiskey, mm -hmm. you know, there's always, <laughs> there's always something that starts, you know, coffee, tea, uh, whiskey, there's always kind of like that first experience you had, and it might have been something that was like, was off-putting for tea being bitterness, coffee being bitterness probably mm -hmm. too, uh, but whiskey, you know, has that shock and awe flavor that you do have to kind of adjust to it mm -hmm. too, but uh, that for me was, you know, there was definitely the first time I had whiskey, it was like, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. Why is this a thing? Yep. <laughs> I think a lot, of people, a lot of people share that sentiment, especially since a lot of people's first uh, attempts at drinking whiskey is like cinnamon fireball or something. You know, it's a, it's like right. a party drink. Yeah, and then they start having the when I when I told someone who was it was he's this guy's like fifty years old. And he's like I, I was like tw just shy at twenty one. He's like, what do you drink? You know, I'm like, oh, I like whiskey. He's like, you like whiskey? Like like what kinds of whiskeys have you had? I'm like, oh, you know, I've had lots of. Nice scotches, all, the Lagavulin and Ardbeg. Nice to have a dad that buys that. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And he's like, oh, "Well, you like that stuff? Like, like whiskey is an old guy's drink, you know." He's like, I barely even started liking whiskey. Like, he, the only people he knows that like enjoy whiskey like that are like sixty years old or ten years old older than him. Well, I love as, as if it's like an old person's acquired taste thing. Well, it's not. It's not that it's acquired taste, but it, it is kind of shaped into that. Just mm -hmm. because uh, it kind of skipped a generation. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that you, you know, I encourage to go watch. Anyone, you know, go watch documentaries about it. Uh, but there is a fascination about whiskey and bourbon in general. I would say because of the prohibition, and it kind of was the main impact of America. Even though there was different impacts that happened mm -hmm. because of it. Uh, but that too, being in the 60s and 70s, a lot of young people that didn't really want to do things like their parents did. Yeah. And then when, you know, when cocktails and uh, clear spirits became very popular, vodka, gin, so to speak, uh, whiskey fell out of fla uh, favor. Mm -hmm. So, but something that the bourbon industry is coming around to, and a lot of the younger drinkers, you and me, um, essentially, probably not all the cases, but it's something that we feel interested in mm -hmm. uh, due to whatever reasons. But, you know, even my dad had whiskey, but it was more of a, he liked the smoked maple, uh, mm. not Creek. Oh, yeah. And some stuff, which isn't bad. No. But no. Uh, it definitely wasn't the extent. Of what, what, we, we're, what we've tried, we are now. Yeah. Your dad more so mm -hmm. you know, was into it definitely. So it didn't ne necessarily skip generations, but supposedly that's what they're saying is, yeah. you know, it's just kind of it always skips a generation. It's it's a fashion that comes back. Yeah, it's a good thing that America, or it might, it might be a good thing that America had, had skipped a couple generations for whiskey was because I was just reading it. It's it's a, a weird historical joke because uh -huh. when Scotland invented their style of Scotch whiskey, yes, they made no notable contributions to technology or inventions for the next. I saw three, that for the too. next like three hundred years. You, I that was the Irish though. I think it was Irish. I think it was the Irish. The Irish. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was the it was Scottish. Like three hundred years. Yeah, like three hundred yeah. years. Yep. They they didn't make anything. Yeah. Like they just. Nothing happened. We made whiskey. <laughs> and, the things, and, years later. and it was good times. Good times. No need to make anything new. The whiskey... History on whiskey... History in general, very interesting. But the whiskey history... <laughs> history in general. Yeah. The whiskey... It's really uh, cool what things have happened. It's amazing. Ever. Jeez. You know what happened like, in the 60s? We went to the moon. No way. <laughs> What's the moon? What's the moon? But anyways, is this next one... I should I should let you explain. I think what to... this is the Black Earl Grey okay. tea, and I think it needs to steep for about four minutes. Oh my gosh! The longest oh, back to conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So 
But uh, essentially, you know, the history is, I encourage, once again, go watch some documentary uh, on it, Bourbon, you know, even Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, I've been listening to their podcast, Around the Barrel, has some very interesting topics on it. Um, and they kind of talk about the history of Jack Daniels and how that plays into bourbon and other um, whiskey outlets, too. But, you know, in the 60s when they were uh, legalizing bourbon as an actual term and something uh, that is exclusive to the United States, they, you know, Tennessee whiskey essentially wasn't a category. It was more of a self-given title. Mm-hmm. But now it is a category, and the United States was actually trying to uh, get them to call themselves bourbon for, I believe, just lack of confusion. Mm. But some interesting things going on, you know, essentially. But Scott Scottish-style whiskey definitely has their history there, and the Irish uh, whiskey collapse, essentially. Mm. <laughs> uh, and to, I think, primarily to distilleries, and Middleton being own... Uh, Producing Jameson, Redbreast, mm-hmm. uh, the whole nine yards, the of, green of spots, Irish whiskey, yeah, essentially yeah. The, the core is very interesting and in how that occurred. And but you know what I think is interesting? How sometimes it only takes like one person that you know to start talking about something that they love mm-hmm. and they like are really interested in to get you like it just sparks your interest. So you want to start and, drinking now? Right. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Almost there. Almost. We'll have to. I, I'm years. when that day comes, we'll have to have you on and uh, walk you through. Yeah, that sounds the fun. Things we, the probably things we the like. core, the core elements. Yeah. Indy, Indy did have um, Japanese gin, just a little bit. Okay. Just to see, because you know Japanese culture, you know, just wanted to see what, right. it, what it was like, and it was re- it's really good gin. Because it was really a good it was a Roku gin. You, with six Japanese You can Japanese drink that stuff straight. Really, it's, it's good. I got to get into some more spirits yeah I've, I've spent a lot of time in whiskey just scratched the surface on that because it is such a wide category yep yeah but, we got we got mezcal we got tequila we got gin we got yeah. i don't think you can classify vodka as something that you would like you, try vodka and, cross sport is pretty just much vodka yeah it, it's a that that is really <laughs> a have, mixing drink you've had you one just, vodka you've you had the ball had 80 yep. percent of all the flavor profiles yep. you ever have. And then, you know, beer and whiskey are huge, especially beer. Beer is freaking massive. Right. Mainly because of laws and regulation. More more people... Beer is a lot more accessible of a drink than whiskey. And you can home produce it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, there's more testing you can do legally without investments. But the and interesting maybe- thing is you can think of the amount of micro distilleries and the amount of varieties of beer. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine turning all of those into its own distinct whiskey because mm-hmm. you totally could and it would all come out different yep that'd be that's, nice that's just I, the, I, I much the prefer vast. whiskey over beer yeah but. maybe you guys could have lane on for as a guest for beer. Bring oh, a bunch of yeah. that Hill be, beer. that's a good idea yeah, we yeah, should do he works have at a him brewery, on yeah. yeah so lane's our other sibling and he works at a brewery in chanhassen right shakopee, shakopee. So, yeah. That would be a fun episode to mm-hmm. hear. I actually... Of course, he's going to throw in... Like, he, he'll he have to, like, throw in that, that brewery's stuff and say it's good, you know? But all the rest of us know that it's, it's like, okay. But we get free beer. <laughs> we get free beer. So, yeah. we're fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not bad beer, but it's not, like, as good as they think it really is. <laughs> there was for a while, you know, I was... Uh, I like, you know, I like my beer and stuff. Yep. But essentially, when I started getting more into... Uh, whiskeys and stuff. I found when I went back to beer, I I couldn't couldn't do it. Do it. Yep. There was just something about it. It was too heavy. Yeah. It was I, really I, ironic. I I like I like going to breweries. I don't like drinking beer at home, but I do like drinking beer. Yeah. Out. Like I I guess a beer and a burger is way better than a, a whiskey and a burger. Or there's there's only a couple meals that I would drink with whiskey, and a lot more I would drink with beer. Okay, I think we can we can pour. Our Earl Grey. So, all right. So the Earl Grey. So this is using instead of not having a tea bag as your I forgot what you called it, but um, restraint restriction. Yeah. <laughs> infusion. Infusion. Okay. So we changed the infusion method. Mm-hmm. I see. There we go. 
That is definitely the darkest out of all of them so far. Yeah. It does look kind of red, doesn't it? Yeah. You want it darker. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get my Leonard Cohen voice on in his old age. He had he has the deepest old guy voice until he died. But <laughs> Wait, is that the guy from... It's the guy who wrote Hallelujah. Oh, that's not what I'm thinking of. What did you think he was in? I was thinking of an actor. No. Yeah. yeah. All right. Nose. Mm, this this is very medicinal. I hope it's brewed long enough. There's a cereal. This is reminding me of. Fruity yeah, li- Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, fruity, no, um, it's Fruity Pebbles. Or or um, Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably the Fruit Loops actually, but yeah. They they use the same whatever. No, it's each, dextrose. each color is different. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this is so light. <laughs> I'm not really getting any flavor. Oh yeah. This is this is even more light than the white tea. No, no, it's not. There's much. The body is is more so distinct. This is yeah. Um, this I guess is nothing I, do, I like get I get okay, yeah, I you're right. I get like a, a spearmint or a mint. Yes, that must know. be the bergamot. The be- bergamot. Mm. So usually when we're cupping into coffee, we purposely uh, slurp. Essentially, to aerate more. Ah. Oh. Is that a no-no in tea? No, not at all. Okay. Actually, in tea ceremonies, they usually. Oh wow! Look at all those big birds. Whoa! Look at them. Mm-hmm. It's just, it just crows. What's up there? That's just a ton tons, of crows. Just tons of crows. I've never seen so many crows. It's a in grouping my life. of black eagles. Yeah. What? Okay. But anyway. A, you know what the plural of crows is? No. A murder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a murder of crows. We came across a huge group, a, a murder of crows in the woods yesterday, like way far back. And I was so creeped out because there's also like a really strong, strange scent. Once we got into the woods, mm-hmm. I was like, oh no, what's back <laughs> what here? What are we going to find? I was like, it's Edgar Dad, Allan you can Poe go, back from you the can go dead. over there. I'm going to like take a big loop. Not, I'm just going to completely avoid that area. But that's where the bot. <laughs> yeah. At least 10 of them. Do you, so do you remember, Dylan, when we were... We were filming a, a little uh, Sasquatch. That was kind of creepy. And a little Sasquatch video. Wait, which which time? Um, this is when we were Washington, Oregon. I think it was. I thought it was Washington. Um, it was during the day. During the day, we, yep. went, to, we went down to a river, a little river ravine, looking for tracks and stuff. And we were on our way back. I'm just recording with the GoPro, and I'm just walking straight. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm so. And then I walked. There was like a what was it? A coyote? Or no? It was a. I uh, think it was a coyote. Coyote or yeah, it must have been a coyote. Anyway, coyote or fox, something smaller. Just something decomposing, like right in front of me. Like, it was just the weirdest sight. And it spooked me so bad because it was like, it was like a skeleton with fur still. So it was like. At first, we were like, is this somebody's dog? Yeah, like, did someone's dog come out here and die? Because <laughs> that'd be really sad. But that spooked me real bad. And I wish I would have seen it from before because I almost had a, a mini heart attack. I was glad we had the GPS. Yeah, we did get back to where we were. <laughs> we were lost in the woods. I actually have some of that recording, I think, on mm-hmm. my computer. I have the yeah, you have the recording of me finding it. Yeah. I, I had the chest mount yep. on. It wasn't as it, it, and it. If you're watching the video, it's not like as because you can see the dog or the coyote way before I even notice it. So it's not. If you're like viewing it naturally, you probably be like, "Oh, look, there's like a dead animal there." And then you, you could see it yourself walk up to it. Yeah, yeah. But like, I didn't just, notice it at yeah. all until so I'm like right on top of it. I'm like, "Holy crap!" That was fun. I want to yeah. go. I want to go back there. Yeah. That spot for me is just a is it's just big. an amazing spot. It's, it's just gorgeous. So you the also, just in the tons woods. tons of dead. Um, were those all aspens and birches or? Yeah. Just tons and tons of fell trees. Be creepy to walk through that by yourself. Yeah. During overcast. Oh yeah. With, with a ha- with a hazy fog, enveloping the woods. Yeah. So I was kind of hoping for a strong. That was supposed to be our strong tea. Yeah. <laughs> but I I definitely underestimated how much tea we needed for the amount of water. Yeah. We started off with a bang though. That green tea. That was really good. Yeah. Both the cold brew and the hot. Yeah, those are still my favorite, I think. But now we'll just 
will be our finale. Ooh. Herbal tea. I find myself, you know, like, uh, if I'm not having whiskey, I'm needing something for kind of the... To accompany you through the night. <laughs> That's someone. No, <laughs> no, it's just like some, something bold, flavorful. You sure. Know? Not not because of it. Yeah, not because of uh, you know, the needing the alcohol, but just something that's like, man, I wish I had something bold and even coffee. Yeah. You know, a couple times I thought about even bringing my home decaf. Yeah. Which to to drink at night or in the evening. Yeah. Yeah. It's something bold and uh, flavorful because usually we don't have soda around now. Yeah. But so does you just realize just how bad soda just is for you? Yeah, even it's if you get not good. you can get you can just try all the alternatives you want the zero sugar or the diet or the whatever. But it's still yeah, nothing's good. Yeah, none of it's diet's not good. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, because so it tastes amazing. Tea, it's kind of like if you're gonna drink tea, that's what you usually have, right? Um, right now I think I have some. I do have some black tea. But I think most of it right now is chai tea, mm. uh, decaf Ooh. chai tea. That sounds really good. Which is, I don't know how that fits in. It's kind of, for me, it kind of seems like the Highlander Grog or the flavored mm-hmm. uh, tea of, you know, yep. like, uh, well, of tea. Yep. But, it usually but, is a black tea base. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, because it's not like a plant tea that you... It's not, it's not, there's no chai plant that you get the chai tea from. Right, so it's an artificial. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's Indian, right? I believe chai is Indian in in origin. But I, I like that. They, Indians really, India is really good at putting spices yeah. and things. But I mean, for me, it's you know, uh, if we're at work, I usually have the very bold and uh, present just black coffee. Yep. Yeah. And you know, depending on what it is, different flavors associated with that, and then when I get home and I choose to. It's usually having a whiskey that is very bold and stands up to essentially what my palate is used to. Mm-hmm. So that's what it kind of would. Uh, what I like in tea is just something that is very bold and uh, less so concerned about bitterness, but just because of the f- coffee. Um, You're so used to it already. Right. It is not something that I, I find negative automatically. But mm-hmm. yeah. So, this black tea, how long does this have to brew? This is herbal tea. Oh, okay. But the black tea was like a five-minute brew. Okay. Yeah, this this tea we just drank that was the Earl Grey was definitely not a typical black tea flavor. So, it was kind of a flop. What was What's your best memory associated with tea? Um, I have to think about that one. Um, probably... Being back in the woods with my friend Cayenne, and it was like the first time we went out mushrooming together. <laughs> um, Hashtag forger friendly. Yeah, and we had some hot green tea, like in a cute little spot way back in the woods. And like when I think of a fun time, like just really, really enjoying yourself, drinking tea with a friend, and having a fun conversation. Mm. That's probably what I think about the most. My best memory. With tea. So what does what does tea kind of represent for you? Like what um, hmm. what does it embody? Oh, <laughs> let's let's enter here. into this new. I'm trying to I'm trying to get better at podcasts. This uh-huh. new headspace. <laughs> this is a nice a nice topic. Um, I guess it kind of I don't know I don't normally think about it on too deep of a level, but it's kind of a part of my what I'm interested in, like wellness. Right. In general, just feeling good and enjoying life. And you've talked about, and, you know, the Japanese side of things, you know, they're the culture and you yeah. enjoy that. And this does play a part into it. For sure. Yeah. I like a little bit of Japan and everything mm-hmm. that I do and everything that I'm part of. I can speak it's, to that. Yeah. It's just uh, such a amazing culture. And so I like that. And then I like, you know, taking native plants from our area. And infusing that into tea, too. Mm -hmm. At home, a lot of the teas I have are blends of herbs instead of caffeinated, like the actual tea um, plant. Right. 
So that's what I'm mostly used to. I just, yeah, I guess it kind of is part of... I just really enjoy food, cooking and, you know, drinks, making food and drinks. So um, just kind of makes me happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's all that matters. Yeah. Tea makes me... It just dulls my being. It makes like, you just <laughs> calms you down too just much. so much. <laughs> like... I feel I feel really good right now. Too. Yeah, it's not like a it's not a buzz, but I'm just like so calm, mm -hmm. yeah. so tired. <laughs> I am ready to fall asleep. But and that's after a bunch of caffeinated tea. Yeah, this stuff is good. I yeah. like I like it. It's 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 different. Um, it's nothing I've had, you know, or or, right. or you know, uh, done because it's. It's much more uh, enveloped, I would say. I'm, I'm sure you could get in this much involved to coffee too. I mean, we we kind of mm -hmm. know that mm -hmm. it's it's very easy <clears throat> to do easy to do so, but it usually never happens that much. So, but uh, it's totally understandable, and it's I it is enjoyable too. Yeah, I guess but, like to answer your question more concise. Before, I was just kind of rambling, but I feel like it's kind of, tea is a nice compliment to a person's lifestyle. And for me, it's just kind of an enjoyable, like, activity to have on a, on a regular basis. Right. And it does a very nice job, too. And it can kind of take the uh, very fun and artsy and um, enjoyment into you know and created a hobby out of it too mm -hmm. you know kind of whereas um enjoying certain whiskeys or other drinks can be a hobby too and but uh yeah, it yeah. gives you that certain feeling that right. you can't really get from anything else yeah i like the artisanal properties of the pots yeah There's so many different yeah. kinds of pots mm -hmm. they all look cool yeah this one is cast iron i think mm -hmm. oh is it done brewing, you think? Almost. Okay. For so, herbal teas, you can brew them for up to an hour. Oh, my I goodness. usually do 10 to 15 oh, really? minutes. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. Because <laughs> so you're trying to extract all the good properties. Is this a potion? Or... <laughs> <laughs> trying to make a potion, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zach, I got a question for you. Yeah. You know, I've kind of explained uh, when, I'm, when I'm not having whiskey, I enjoy bold flavors. Yeah. Which, you know, whether it's flavored uh, tea essentially that may be the case just because mm -hmm. maybe possibly that's all I've had mm -hmm. uh, essentially in the household right now that I haven't purchased. But what do you find yourself kind of going to if you are looking for something bold and flavorful, but it is not alcoholic? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go with, I don't, I don't drink this usually at, at night. But it is, I find it quite enjoying. Is uh, kombucha? Okay, I, I, I do like kombucha. Huh? I do like kombucha a lot. I've had a couple of indies, you know. And then whenever it, my mom picks it up from the store, I, I just grab, I steal one from the fridge, <laughs> and then keep it because it's so it's so like spicy and right. You know, it, it, I guess technically it is it is alcoholic, but only you know it's a fraction. It is it is <laughs> fermented. I'm not gonna lie. Gotta get but some it, of it. Yep. Um, but I guess if I if I didn't say that, I'm gonna say <laughs> bowl. Ooh. Zach's inner hippie is coming out. Yeah. Honestly, I used to drink. This isn't bold at all, but I used to drink milk all the time. I love just a glass of milk. Chocolate milk. Okay. Yep. Chocolate milk too. Yeah. But like my da my dad would always say like, well, dad would always say that milk was like. You know, help build strong bones, helps mm -hmm. you sleep. Like milk is the cure all for everything. You know, like it makes you feel better, makes you stronger. Like I'm like, yeah, I, I like <laughs> a little milk. plug for the vegans yep. in here. It's really not. And actually. then like, and then like, it, it makes it does it did make me feel good because like, oh, it's like it, cre it like coats my throat and I feel more relaxed. And then I learn later that cow's milk is just so bad for you, <laughs> and it saddens me because I love it so much. Oat milk, though. So, yeah, I'm going to say kombucha. Kombucha is my answer. Kombucha, okay. I don't think I've actually had any kombucha. Next time. 
next it's time. It's tea-based. Good. You know, if we do episode two yep. of the tea series, there's a couple things that we're going to do tea derivatives. Double we should donkey. do a kombucha Double testing donkey. and matcha. Okay. You guys have to try some matcha. And what about? A, I really want the uh, chaga. Chaga. That's my favorite tea that Indy made. It's chaga. It's very bold. Yeah. And if you make it, you can make a chaga chai. And that's really, really delicious. We should hmm. do that next time. I think you like it. If you like a chai tea. There is another type of tea I wanted to show you guys. Um, maybe it'll come to me as we're iced talking. Iced tea. Mm-mm. <laughs> I love iced tea. Yeah. <laughs> so, so bad. <laughs> I don't want soda. I'm going to be good this yep. week. Iced tea. Arnold Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. There's hmm. just as much sugar in this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Arnold Palmer. Ar- oh, my God. Arnold Palmer. <laughs> Arnold Palmer, you have contributed so much to the tea mm-hmm. industry. I used. To, I bought, when I first started getting some sort of income, one of my first purchases was a mini fridge for my room because I was so tired of taking We still a, need a mini fridge here. I know. Um, and I bought one and all I did was I filled it at the, but right, right away I bought like Mountain Dews and stuff and stuff Obviously. that, yeah, Mountain Dews and like root beer. Cause you know, you're like 15. From, yeah. I was like 16. Yeah. 15. Yeah. And then like a year later I, I just started binging a game called destiny and I just, I needed to stay up till 2 AM was when the reset was. So that's when all of the parts of the game would reset you can, you can redo quests redo bounties get all your experience right for the next day at two in the morning so i needed i needed to stay up till two in the morning i wish i still had those days those were fun those are great i mean those are defining moments of youth for me but <laughs> i don't i guess if i had to do it again i'd probably choose not to because i always felt like crap the next day but in the moment in the moment good time there is no good better time, than time. Three, there's, if not now then yep. when it, there's no better moment than 1 30 in the morning on a friday night you know like and yeah. you're like 17 when years you're old. like six, 16 17 years old that is prime time of your youth what's my age again what's, what's my, my age again uh good so anyway boys, so what, what i did what i ended up doing was i just stocked the mini fridge full of arnie palmer's Oh, the Arnie yeah. Palmer for Earth. Eat him from yeah, Sam's Club. I remember yeah. those days. Yep, and they were th- they're like the ten ounce ones, you know, the thin can ones. Did you ever go to school, or did you have Ar- Arnold Palmer's? No, at Michelle Obama ruined everything for Michelle us. Obama. Yeah, we used to have some on there, um, and they always, you know, it said ninety nine cents on the can, but it was but like they a would cross buck, them out a buck with like a sharpie, a buck and you're 40. like, I, I, we're high school students, but we're not that stupid. Yeah, you know, it's, we know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that and the um, canned mocha coffee drinks the starbucks Hot and the... Sellers. Oh, no they yeah. weren't they weren't starbucks they were something else okay in aluminum cans hmm. uh hot sellers but they knew how to milk the high schoolers mm-hmm. for their money during lunchtime there was actually talk of putting uh a starbucks in that high school which really? i don't know how that's possible yeah to get away with that you, well, you, you would need some of the students to like work there <laughs> but isn't that a weird business like gray area i feel like well starbucks has a lot to do these days you know with education you know they sponsor they sponsor uh your college education if you choose to do so if you work for them blah 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 well but i guess i might i i might um what i meant from that is Putting an actual business that's not oh, directly right. the school into school. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess it's no different than putting a business inside a, any other government building. You know. I, I right. Think, like if you had a, if you had a Starbucks in a courthouse, I think you could have a Starbucks in the school. Hmm. Which they don't. They don't have Starbucks and courthouses, as far as as far as <laughs> so, I know. So that's, that's a good example. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, I I, I think it and ended up not happening anyways. Mm-hmm. But probably because of uh, government. Yep. Reasons, anyways. So, but it was definitely something that was interesting at the time. And yeah. But when I was in high school, I always I, I had heard about the legendary Tim oh, Hortons. Ready? You know. Oh, the Tim Hortons? The, the Canadian, the golden wonderland of coffee. Golden and then they wonderland. finally did come to the States, and it was bad. It was garbage. Like, 
And then even in Canada, they started losing quality. You know. Here's the age-old question: Starbucks or Caribou? Caribou. Um, maybe now that we, ever since I started working at a coffee roastery, I can't stand the coffee of either of them. But you have to pick Caribou. Yeah, me too. Starbucks. Yeah. Uh huh. Starbucks. Well, you don't get the coffee at Starbucks though. You get the. There's one coffee get the I get at Starbucks though. It's yeah. So good that I was already telling you guys about the oat milk, honey blonde latte. Right. So good. I stopped at Mocha Monkey today because mm-hmm. you know it's been, it's been a hot week. Yeah. I got a blended zebra mocha, which is essentially a mocha frappe or whatever. Uh, that was good. <clears throat> that was good. Yep. Yeah. So back to tea. <laughs> Packs We're going to try tea. this herbal tea. The nose. So is this the mixture one? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's kind of got that baking spice for me, at least, like a cinnamon. Mm. Ooh. On Ooh. the sip. See, this is this is like the typical tea that I'm drinking. Oh, yeah. This is much. So good. This is flavor. Very pronounced. Numerous flavors, too. I mean, Numerous. it's lemon and. I guess I'm just getting lemon right now. Hold on. Hold on. It's definitely lemon at first, but it's but it's a subtle lemon. There's a minty, yeah, um, a little minty mintiness yeah, to it. Yeah, this this has that same brothy quality that that one green tea had. Yeah, that is true. I like that there's endless varieties when you make mm. herbal tea. This right. tastes, I guess I don't know how to say it. But it tastes leafy. Like I can, I'm actually like applying like a leaf to my tongue. <laughs> Reminds me of like a fresh cut grass not like mm-hmm. necessarily anything it tastes like that, the smell but... yeah a little bit mm-hmm. but it's just it's that memory mm-hmm. of cut vegetation yeah. Yeah. you know that one time that you, you every kid goes through this phase where they eat a dandelion because they heard that you could yeah <laughs> <laughs> this tastes like that there's dandelion tea isn't there uh-huh i mean there's dandelion wine the root is actually mean, a but... coffee substitute what yeah Really? People dig up the roots and roast them and then chop them up. And no why would way. you substitute that? Substitute. Why, like, why would you substitute coffee? Yeah. Like, okay. it, <laughs> I guess people hipster. don't want the caffeine or something. But they want the flavor. <laughs> so, also the, like, for people who want that coffee flavor. They want the roasted flavor. It's like deep, um, strong, earthy. Must have some sort of reminiscent coffee mm, perhaps. flavor. Perhaps. But it's really good for you, I guess. Interesting. That is interesting. Well, we missed the window for dandelions, so we'll have to wait till next spring. They're still dead. Yeah. dead. I'm sure you can still find some dead dandelions. Do you want those, though? You just need the roots. <laughs> you just need the roots. <laughs> you just need the roots. doesn't matter how they are. This is really yeah. nice. So. This is probably my third favorite right now. If we're including the cold brew tea, the green tea with the rice, and then this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say green tea with rice first, then this, then cold green. Okay. Then, I guess, I, that's, all, that's actually all that matters. This is my favorite. This one, just because it, I love the lemon. Mm-hmm. What's your second or third? Second is the right, the pop rice mm-hmm. green tea, and then third is the the cold brew green tea. Yeah, those are just so um, good. If I were, if I made the black tea properly and the white tea, I think it would have been a different experience. So that was too bad, but would next we have time, been tripping? We'd be tripping. <laughs> made it made it properly. Yeah, we would have just amazed. Yeah, it would have been a different experience I, if you. We know could what also I mean. get some of that fermented tea. Have you heard of like pu'er? No, I have not. It's kind of cool. Um, it's, you know, this, I'm not sure what level of oxidation it's at, but I guess it's like a whole different flavor profile. Does anyone make a spirit using tea? Hmm. Because the fermentation, you know, that's, mm-hmm. you can make spirits out of that. Essentially. Yeah. But I don't know, a little off subject, but. Yeah. Did you want to talk about your whiskey, um, tea, oh, are we cocktail? Done? Was it, that was the last one? Mm-hmm. That was our last one. All right. So, you know, I I was originally in discussion with Zach, and I was going to make a shenanigan and make a 
Long Island iced tea, but that actually had tea in it. Mm-hmm. And then we could try it. Uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> so this is the lazy version of it. So what I did is I took something that sometimes people refer to having tea notes, which is rye whiskey. Mm-hmm. But instead of essentially brewing tea with water, I thought let's brew some tea using 45% rye whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is that we have before us. How do we heat this up? <laughs> what tea do we do we use? use? I'm going to say we, we should use the white tea. Do you want any more of the herbal? Yeah, like, for that. The white tea has the most to I, gain. I was kind of thinking the... The green tea. The green tea without the rice in it. Without the cold brew. (laughs) I just dropped everything. Yeah, that's all right. You're supposed to hold it when you pour it. It's fine. Well, I guess if it's the green tea that we have as the rice, then I would say, yeah, let's not use that. Mm -hmm. So then either the white or maybe the black. Okay. I'd say the white. I think the white is the most to give and the most to gain from the whiskey. I guess that's the quite. So then we have to f- decide is how long do we let it steep? I would uh, say a long. I would say a long time. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's you cold. Know, like three minutes. Yeah, room temperature brew. So. Oh, we're not heating this up. You want to heat? I thought it was gonna be a we warm drink. Up, yeah. I wanted to heat. I don't know how much we wanted to put in, but I was, you know, think a couple ounces, maybe. Three minutes see. sounds good. Yeah. Because I, 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 yeah, I got my own. Yeah, well, I got my own glass, yeah. so we can put it in my mixer. Just heat up some of the whiskey, put it in the mixer, put the leaves in there, and then I get strain it out with the uh, uh, cocktail strainer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Sounds good to me. I mean, it sounds bad. This, is not, right, this me, doesn't sound very good. Let me try you gotta tasting, at least give it a try. How do I get do? over there? Huh. So the other thing about, you know, how this tea, they all added up a little bit light, lighter than usual. It might have had something to do with that the pot. Filled. I know. That's all the excess water. Because the pot's like, the infuser is up on the top, and then mm-hmm. I pour the water into it. And I wonder if the tea leaves weren't sitting in the water, if it just got, the water got poured over it, mm-hmm. and only that much infused into the tea, that it, it didn't soak in it. So this is Jack Daniel's rye whiskey. Um, Zach and I, we actually have not had this yet. Mm-hmm. Would you like to try it before we mutilate you probably, it? You probably should, yeah. <laughs> cork, do cork pop. <laughs> pop pop <laughs> where's carter yep. uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just need it. just enough for a taste okay so the yep. cup matters in tea and in whiskey. whiskey it also matters in whiskey yep i we we use Glen Cairns on on our little podcast here. I went home. Here, can, uh, I'm this, drinking. This one's empty, but you can take it and look at it. Yep. So Beautiful. That's a, it's a Glen Cairn. So that's called a Glen Cairn. Uh, it's a, essentially a tulip shaped to allow the scent of the whiskey to easily be oh. captured. This is you know Zach ordered a couple of these. Mm-hmm. It's I saw those, but. Other than that, I've never seen a cup this shape. It's very unique. Mm-hmm. So it collects, you know, it essentially collects the vapors and then funnels it to oh. a narrow point. And you can smell it. Cool. It's beautiful. Nothing dominant on the smell as far as different from other eyes. Much more malty on the scent. Smooth. That's much lighter. Than What's the proofing on this? 45. Oh, that's why. Mm. That's not bad. I kind of like that. It might be a little light for me. Yeah. But nevertheless, you're, this this is actually next. Can I, I, pour, I should ask you. Yeah. Can, can I, I put pour whiskey? A little bit of whiskey. In of course you can. Okay, it should, thank you. It shouldn't caramelize. No, it shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. This is blasphemy, by the way. <laughs> have you ever heated up whiskey before? No. Oh, you have to put it on the little thing. The pad, yeah. And then, yeah, click it up. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> and then I'll get the white tea. Here it is. 
So how much how much weight do you should I put? Hmm, I don't know, like uh maybe a tablespoon? <laughs> if you can't hear that sound. <laughs> it's um I just don't have enough in there. Yeah. Lots of I think lots of vapors are being created right now. I mean, it's not flammable. I mean, it is, but it's only forty five. Right. Oh, you're right. It's not. It's not. Yeah. It's not a hundred proof. <laughs> so to kind of wrap up our tea discussion, as we're moving on to whiskey, should we do a little review? I think that means it got to boiling. Of how, like, how much, how much tea should I put in, in your opinion? Yeah, like, I would say a tablespoon's worth. So you can use, use this. this one? Um, you can use that. Okay. Use Actually, this to scoop it out? Sure, yeah. Okay. And Maybe fill up, like, half of your little sieve there. I was just going to put it in the bottom. Oh! Uh, because I don't really have a way to get it out. Oh, yeah. Just, like, a spoonful? Yeah, let's see how much that is. Yeah, that looks that's like yep. a good amount. Put that in the mixer. For the amount of whiskey you have. Alright. Wow, I can smell it that's in a, the air. It just hit me too. <laughs> <laughs> you guys oh, see how excited it. Dylan gets? Oh yes. Mmm, caramel. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like an evil doctor. <laughs> so we will now... We've let this cool. This is reflecting everything that I have learned from India. <laughs> yeah. This is cooled now. We're mm -hmm. going to pour it down to our whiskey uh, kettle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Put the whiskey kettle down. Some, somehow we're going to have accidentally created a poison. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Where'd the cap go? And it's all gonna be recorded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stupid idiots. Boil whiskey on camera and Boil combine it. Liver. <laughs> yeah. So now as so now we let it we let it steep for as a we long, learn long we time. have to let it steep. It's already getting darker. This is crazy. This will be the greatest thing ever. I really I hope so. I should Sounds have made pretty... an iced. I was going to make an iced, iced version, version, but I I did not have time. Next, like we said, part two. Part two. This is only right though with our tea theme that <laughs> yeah. is hot, you know. I guess. So the reason, like I kind of said, I picked rye is a lot of the times it either has black licorice, excuse me, notes to it. Um, sometimes it has tea notes to it. Uh, so it's, it's, it's something fitting, I thought, to use as a, in place of water mm -hmm. to make it yeah. enhance the tea more so is something that sometimes represents some teas in whiskey, the world, but. I'm interested to see what you guys think of how much the flavor has changed because yeah. white tea for I, us I, is so I'm, light. I'm afraid that the heat is gonna, what's going to change the flavor the most. Yeah. Well, the heat definitely will affect the whiskey. Yeah. Uh, but I like this. I, I don't know if I'm going to use this as a cocktail because it's already kind of light. But just drinking this, this is yeah, it's pretty good. You can I can definitely see the influence of Jack Daniels so. though, right? Which is I, not a bad thing. But um, yeah, I might try some more later. But I just it, nothing was super um, super discernible, I guess, from its flavor. I could I didn't get that black licorice that I usually do. I did get that multi multi rye flavor and scent but yeah it. it's good 20 bucks yeah that's i'd say it's a good whiskey this yeah that's easy buy and it's 45 where jack that's you know usually higher than their regular yeah uh, and you can um this is a great entry into rye i suppose oh yes like, that's like a perfect because obviously you no know, no one wants to spend the 50 50 dollars on the rye like, mm -hmm. like the, was it Pikes Market or Pikesville? Pike, Pikesville, yeah. And then, and then you have Willet Rye. Willet Rye, which is about fifty dollars, anyways. Yep. But that's cast strength. Yep, and the Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye, which is sixty. Which, yeah, that's sixty. That's currently my favorite. Which but, is very good. Yep. Um, 
but maybe we've created a creation that is even better even better a hundred dollars yep it's it, we can rebottle this for thousands. hundreds oh thousands especially that this is a one-time occasion we probably because we probably ruined that electric kettle <laughs> It probably actually got a good, good sanitizer. It's, sanitizing. Sanitizing. Yeah. it's fine. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. But you might ask if it's electric kettle that heats it up to boiling anyways. Isn't it already sanitized oh, yeah. each time? No. It had like all these hard water stains on it though. <laughs> so that it might have loosened those. Or I, I hope yes. not. Yeah. <laughs> that might be in your whiskey right Oh, now. there's chlorine yeah. stuff and mercury. Yum. Well, I am dying to try this. I'm just dying. I think it's <laughs> it's almost been three let me, minutes. Let me pour this. All right. Careful, Patrick. Careful, Patrick. Careful, Patrick. So what did we talk about? Do you have your cup? Yeah. I will need it. In this podcast, we talked about... We talked about art of tea, culture of tea. attempt mm-hmm. to pour this hot liquid in a strainer, freehand. We kind of barely scratched the surface of... How much do you want? Tea. Just a couple sips. A lot. Sure. Three sips. You know what? Three just, big sips. Three, yeah. <laughs> just do it. Just give it to me. Oh, yes. It smells like apples. Really? <laughs> Ooh. There you go. No, it's not mine. All right, don't try it yet. Holy cow, it smells like apples. What? Can I smell? Yeah. It's like a... Like a cooked apple, mm-hmm. like a I feel like apple it's, pie. it's it's the base scent of Jack Daniels that we've boiled away yeah. to a condensed. Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the taste. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> it's not bad. Oh, it's like sour. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> is not. Is, oh, I thought it was going to have a burning taste. It doesn't at all. No, it, it's like regular Jack Daniels, but the flavor profile is just mm. like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like I stuck my tongue on like is, varnish or what something. What is it? I, I can't even. I can't it's pull, tar. I can't. No, it's. I can't pull yeah. flavor notes yeah. from it. Because it's hot? No. Because it's potent it's just, beyond. It's like super condensed. Yeah. Did the tea just like change it? It's like, mm-hmm. well, I think it's boiling turned into syrup and then we put some tea leaves in there. <laughs> make it sour. It almost make, would make me sick if I kept drinking this. I wonder mm. if the, the mm. tannins from the tea and like the alcohol do not go well together. Cancer. Well. Oh. Oh. Well, thank you, Indy, for yeah. entertaining us this evening and showing I'm, us the way through I'm, tea. Yeah, I'm glad that you... That you at first, Dylan like, said he's going to do this, and I thought it was the dumbest idea, because I just I knew it wasn't going to turn out well. But even though it didn't, I'm so glad we did it. You know, I think it's a great... I'm so glad we did this. Now we know that the cold brew method is definitely the way, <laughs> the to way do we do it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh. <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> I wish we were actually like posting this recording, right? <laughs> the video, this uh, Carter missed out. Yeah, he did. He really did. This is uh, I I like this. This is a good shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, well, we wait. thank you for listening yeah, to this episode. This concludes we concludes this episode. We thank Indy for uh, coming and showing us the world, <laughs> showing a new us world. being our guest on this episode. Yeah. Uh, Indy, do you have any closing closing thoughts? It was fun. It was a good time. We're glad you had fun. Podcasts are, you know, an area of interest for me, so it's kind of fun to mm-hmm. be part of one. Mm-hmm. And and now you're part. Yeah. Now you are. And yep. here we are. This is a full blown. This is definitely a full blown podcast. It is. This is official. Official. N- very legitimate. Very. <laughs> yes. This this video will probably get yeah. what ten views. Maybe. At least. Oh, at, least. <laughs> at least. Maybe eleven. Nine is a high average. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for listening, and we hope you join us again next time for the conclusion of the Bourbon Trials. Thank you, and have a good day. Bye now.